Hello and welcome to the big picture. Starting today, the big picture will look at the various aspects of the two years of the NDA government. Today, we will look at the economy. If there was one thing which the UPA government would have had to blame itself, it was the general perception of policy paralysis in governments. There are also the allegations of corruption in allocation of natural resources like coal and spectrum, which also was the major reason for its downfall. The NDA government, which took over after getting a clear majority, has had its hands full in dealing with the economy. Today, we will look at the promises made and what all it has been able to achieve in the economic sphere and where the economy is heading. To discuss this, I have with me Ajay, Ajay Dua, former Secretary, Ministry of Commerce and Industry, Government of India, Professor Praveen Jha of the Centre for Economic Studies and Planning, JNU, Renu Kohli, economist and former staff member, RBI and IMF, and Shubhmoy Bhattacharya, consulting editor, Business Standard. Welcome to all of you. Mr. Dua, <coughs> if, you, if you have to pinpoint a couple of things which, was, which were actually the most worrisome factor as far as the economy was concerned when the NDA took over, from the UPA two years back, what were they? I think you spelled them out in your opening statement itself. <clears throat> One was lack of decision making. I would put it more emphatically by saying no decisiveness in the government. And second was a whole lot of misdemeanors, particularly in wherever so-called discretionary allotments were possible, crony capitalism could grow. And the, those were exemplified by coal allocation, spectrum allocation, those kind of things. So it was this lack of decision making, decisiveness, I would say, call it leadership, economic leadership. And secondly, not going by the so called value principles in deciding allocations which were within the realm of government. And the then government paid heavily for having pursued that path. So, what has been the change in these last two years? I think, one, the, this government may not have been able to achieve so-called Achhe Din overnight, which it had promised. But certainly, it has corrected both these aspects, which we just talked about. One, there is one leader. So, there is decisiveness. People know that there doesn't have to be too much of uh, dilly dallying in decision making. Second, the technology, market forces, e auction, you know, kind of things which I'm talking of, those have become the basis rather than discretion in allotment and allocation of resources which are within the. And these are, these are, and you say these are major issues. These well, are during major the, factors. During the first year of this government, I think they set themselves on correcting what was the perceived errors of the previous government. And if you and in both these aspects, I think they did well. And they were decisive. Whether that, that by itself is enough to yield higher economic results. We will come to we will come, we'll come to the other aspect. Issue. We will come to the other aspects. Renu Kohli, would you agree with Ajay Dua on these points? Um only to an extent, but not beyond a point. Uh, I do agree that the government has uh, put in instituted mechanism for auctioning of uh, coal, uh, coal blocks, etc., and uh, spectrum uh, auctions, etc., and so on. Uh, the second aspect was, as you had read, and Mr. Du also said, inaction, policy paralysis, etc., and stalled projects. Well, I mean, the pace of clearances has accelerated even more, uh, more than, you know, what the Cabinet Com Committee on Investment, which was there under the UPA time, had uh, done. But there are no bridges. That's the problem. So, which makes me think that was, this, was there an error in analyzing the causes uh, of the downturn? Let's date back the downturn. It started some sometime in 11-12, and we are still continuing that. And uh, so if you look at it from that perspective, then yes, improved governance, decision taking, etc., etc., has not yielded the results that were expected in revival of private business. But how spending. much, but, but how uh, much exports have continued to No, no, I will come to that. We'll come to that, Reno Kohli. But you know, how much of this 
is actually, you know, because of the, you know, you can put the blame on the doorstep and the doorsteps of the government because of its governance or lack of governance. And how much of it is out because of the external factors? We'll come to that. Uh, Pravinja, you know, as how do you look at this? You know, do you think yeah. that perceptionally, this different, they, in the last two years, the government has been able to overcome the factors which the UPA had faced in, in, during its tenure? Um, you know, again, as uh, Renu Kohli said, uh, only to an extent. And uh, my sense is that there has been too much of uh, media hype about the government being able to overcome some of the difficulties which were talked about earlier. And also, the extent of the difficulties which had been talked about with respect to the last regime, for a variety of reasons, the government had become extremely unpopular in the last two, three years, in particularly last two years, and media had played a massive role. For instance, uh, Mr. Dua talked about uh, inaction, lack of decisiveness, and so on and so forth. Now, if you look at the last two months of uh, UPA regime, Mr. Chidambaram had got clearance from cabinet committee to an extent of more than 5 lakh crores. Now, I mean, would you call it policy paralysis? The fact of the matter is that very little was happening after that. Or even earlier, you know, on a variety of counts, I think there was too much of, uh, you know, in a sense, uh, this image uh, issue in anyway. which the media, of course, played a major role. And, of course, UPA itself had contributed to it, okay. in particular no, because but, you know, of well, the well, issues well. of corruption. I mean, I think uh, large-scale corruption was an issue. Yeah. Praveen, Praveen you know, we are not looking at the performance yes, of yes, the yes. India, UPA government. But, you know, what kind of... You know, I, I asked you a question. Perceptionally, you think that the in the last two years, the NDA government has been able to overcome some of these problems which, which, the, which the previous government faced? You see, with respect to, yes, with respect to the two issues that you talked about, I yes. think in terms of policy decisiveness, I wouldn't uh, say that it has really done anything great. Yes, there has been some improvement, sure, sure. you know, for instance, with roads, power, etc. Clearly, there is an acceleration and improvement there. But, you know, it is, it is not a kind of a quantum jump. In that okay. sense. Second, even in, when it comes to corruption, yes, maybe maybe there is not big ticket corruption, but look at what has happened in Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Gujarat, with respect to you know even natural resources and so on and so forth, right? And also you know this issue which was raised that discretion is always worse than auction is not something that I'd like to you know go by. In fact. Uh, when it comes to societal resources, resources of the country and so on and so forth, I am not uh, quite convinced that auction is always the best route to the go. market forces. So, you know, on all these, I would not agree that yes, yes. The market, know, market forces market should be allowed to. Their own huge problems. Okay. Markets. Okay, well, we'll come. We'll no, come no, to. Saying that, yeah. We'll I mean, come. We'll come to those. The markets. Yes. We'll, we'll yes. come to the other factors. Uh, Shumoy. Jumai, one of the issues uh, when, when UPA was there was the inflation, the issue of inflation. Inflation is something this, this government has been able to deal with pretty well. Absolutely. At least retail inflation has come down except some, you know, how do you look at it? Yeah, I would say that uh, basically in terms of the sh problems, if you look at them as a bunch of short term, medium term and long term, if you look at it, the government has been good in handling the short term problems. And the short-term problems are those of managing the immediate threats to the economy. Right. So, as you said, inflation, current account deficit, taking a stance on fiscal deficit that we will be sticking to it. You know, last year, Mr. Chidamaram, despite his promises, couldn't stick to it for various reasons. But sticking to it has its virtue. So they've said we'll stick to it. So as I see the short-term factors, similarly as Mr. Dua talked about, Renu talked about, the saying that we will go in for an auction-led route for allocation of natural resources. Now, that's a short-termable solution which comes along. And is, uh, some of it was, you know, they had no choice because the Supreme Court had, had said that, you know, but you have to go the way to do it. So, in the natural resources, that was largely mandated by the Supreme Court in terms of coal, and even in, even in telecom. But what happened is, it has been extended. The packet has been extended in terms of other sectors also. So, we are sort of accepting it that as far as hard infrastructure is concerned, you got to have a bidding route, which is coming to be seen in roads, for instance, that it's a bidding-based process, which is which has been taken on as the mode of operation. I think the short-term basket looks quite impressive. 
The problem comes not with the long term. The long term is also looking interesting because of many of the plans that are being talked about. You know, the digital, the smart cities and others, they form an interesting bunch. But they will start realizing their promises seven to eight years down the line. Right. The problems come, having done the short term thing, is the government, for instance, they fixed up a lot of things on the electricity side, the, right. you know, providing rural electrification. It wasn't a no brain. It was an easy thing to do. It simply needed management. The, is the medium term basket of objectives, are there adequate number? Has the government looked at them adequately? What does it do from now till 2019? These are the questions, I think, which are the more valid ones and the more significant ones to look at if one wants to assess how the Modi government has been working on. Sudhuwa, so these medium terms which, which he is talking about, for, for instance, in the medium term, I'm sure some of the reforms which they, they spoke about, you know, which, which has been uh, focused on, but they have not been able to really embark on many of these reform measures. Would you agree, agree with that or you think that they have done <coughs> reasonably well? on the, in the? I think a lot of this is work in progress. <coughs> to expect any <coughs> reform measure, whether it's through a statute change or otherwise, there, has to, there is a certain period that has to be given for it to take effect. <coughs> the, I think the fault of this government was that during the election campaign, they promised overnight changes. That is why the first year, second year disappointment that we haven't been able to change. But certainly, if you look at it dispassionately, whatever has been set, in, set into action, whether it is a policy initiative or whether it's an upfront extra government expenditure, all those, I think, will now start having effect. It may not result in 10% rate of growth, 9% rate of growth, but there should certainly be a step up. Of course, if a government claims, any government in the world, that the GDP growth it can control by itself, I think it's a very tall order claim because it uh, so much depends on things outside a government's realm of control. Exports, we talked about. Right. The, we talked about things like, months in India, monsoon is a, it's a major factor. important thing. And last two years we have had drought. Absolutely. But certainly if you look at the reforms in, say, electricity which have been talked about. So-called, I'm not talking of the re restructuring program, financial restructuring program, which various governments have tried in the past, it hasn't worked out. But certainly the Uday, so-called, in the distribution sector particularly. G going green, we've seen... Solar, the solar. Qu solar, the quantum jump there. Look at the growth in uh, roads, highways, inland waters, ports. Clearly... Uh, uh, a plan is in place. Plan is in place. Things have started happening. The long Probably term. a lot more has to happen in railways. <clears throat> so far, it is more conceptual, yet not yet put in, uh, you know, and plan of action on the, on the ground. So I would think similarly, the inflation, what you refer to and Sukuma was just talking about, we've been able to bring it down from about eight percent when the UPA. Left, you know, left, left office. To 5.5 or 5.39% at the end of April. Right. This would have been, if you take the March figures, it was a percentage less. Less. And it is a seasonal variation which is not, we've not been able to control. And that's got something to do with monsoons. So I would say things are on track. There has to be persistence. And the government has to make sure that a number of policy measures, even outside the legislative one, which may succeed, may not succeed, that depends upon a lot many other political equations, that it follows that path of rectitude, continues with whatever it's in its control, and yet not promise too much as it did earlier. And it has made one course correction, and let me stop at that, by realizing within one year of its coming to power that top-down approach will not work in this country. You have to get into agriculture, rural areas, rural distress, as we will also come. looking we will at come poverty, to that. poverty <clears throat> issues, employment issues. We will issues. come to that. We will come to that very important aspect of it. Reno, Reno Kohli, you know what uh, Ajay Dua was talking about. He, you know, one of the issues which, which, uh, where the government seems to be having problems in the last one year, one and a half years, has been the, the, in their legislative, legislative agenda, where, whether it is GST, whether it is land acquisition, they have not been able to push forward. How important are these factors 
in 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 realizing their their uh, you know in realizing whatever they have planned um uh, they're certainly important because uh, they can trigger impulses for new they can open up uh, new areas for investment opportunities for uh, uh, the private sector to participate in but my major concern and something which has not been touched on by any of us before in this discussion is uh, the state of the banking sector and the huge enormous over indebtedness of the large section of the corporates and that to me is directly linked to the presence of uh, entrepreneurial spirit and risk taking appetite that is not there now the fundamental point to be a uh, question to be pondered over is that two years ago the discussion that you started with girish is about what were the reasons for the downfall of the upa what is the mess that it created nobody was talking at of banks and the uh, indebtedness of co corporates at that at that time not in such a meaningful or significant way but now it seems that these are the two major problems have these happened in these last two years or were they already existent my sense is that the downturn that was that came from primarily external forces uh from 2011 12 onwards which was largely linked to the manufacturing sector and we can see that the declining uh, rate of capacity utilization in large uh, manufacturing capacities consistently is matching that kind of evidence but the thing the major thing is that you can kick start and you can do as many things as you like in terms of policy actions and all but at the other end of the table you have to have a private sector to respond the government and does not have the fiscal space of the magnitude to increase the capital spending public uh, infrastructure spending to kick start the economy and for me uh, to me it seems that that's the fundamental point nothing is can happen unless that is uh, uh, that is somehow addressed and uh, you know one small point i want to add to these uh, you know restarting of appetite for road bids and all well i think there are no ppps there are no bidders for that there are no bidders for umpps that is ultra mega power projects it's all under the epc which is the engineering Pro uh, procurement contract there is no risk which the private bidders have to take so you can have anybody will come in bid and also and all so that but you know that is still linked to the uh, Reno, uh, fiscal space that the government has for that Reno, so Reno, very meaningful or significant in my view. Reno, the, the private, you were talking of private investment. Private investments are not coming. It's all, it, you know, it's well known. Everybody is talking about it. You spoke about. You also mentioned very important thing about the corporate debt, the huge debts, which the, and also the bank, the the the, the, private, the public sector banks, the um, the uh, amount of you know, uh, non NPAs which they have uh, managed to. No, Now, not just public sector, even private sector. Even private sector, private but you know we get we get no, but we get to know only about the public sector. It is public still sector. not plateauing out. It is no, still but, increasing. But we get to know only about the public sector. Private sector doesn't open up their accounts to for us to know what exactly is happening there. But you think that the, the that the line taken by the I Reserve Bank of India are, as far as dealing with this NPAs and uh, and also the problem of the public sector banks, you you think that is the right step? you think the government is is also moving in the right direction on this well they are on one page and that has been publicly uh, confirmed by no less than the rbi governor himself that the government it's a joint uh, sort of uh, approach and uh, while one can always debate on either side this is not the time but the point is that, that some things have set in motion and it's very important that these things are uh, redeemed and the bank's balance sheets are strengthened the banking sector itself is fortified and its health is restored and it the problem is not confined to just public sector banks on the other hand we find that uh, the large uh, levels of debt uh that most of the large corporate firms have they're not coming down interest costs are mounting every quarter how so, much how much you know, how when you have these kind of no reno but uh, known, as, known as balance sheet constraints if you have these things tied uh, tying tie, tying the private sector the firms and the banks at the ankles as it were i would not expect uh, much uh, activity to take place okay you you want to respond to that mr dua i think we must distinguish between mm -hmm. uh, the present situation and the problems of the banks has it occurred during the last two years yeah, that that's the point or 
worthy banks, munificent, generous in lending when they thought that the, it was an upturn in the economy. I, I think the upturn was up to about 2011. Most of the lending w which we are today has come to roost. It's post-2011. It's, it's, no, it's up to 2011. So all so these I, are... Most of it is that. It is thereafter, whether it was bad monsoons, whether it is our uh, economy you know, not doing well, etc. Where has the private sector investment failed? Or why has it failed? Because they, find, they found that there wasn't sufficient domestic demand, rural areas lagging behind, not enough public expenditure during the first year of the, government, the present government in the rural areas, etc. Alongside that, the global market for exports and others had come down. That is where our private sector, despite all this talk about foreign investment coming in, etc., nobody was actually putting their money, money. Where, uh, and their mouth. They were just saying, good, good, things are changing, but nobody put the investment And down. it continues, the, the situation continues. It continues, continues today, so. it is still 7 to 8 percent less than the 36 percent, which we saw 36 percent of the GDP being invested in capital formation in 2010-11. That's okay. the highest which okay. we achieved. Uh, Praveen, you know, Praveen, another coming to another major issue, major, major issue, is about the job creation. You know, we have been talking about jobless growth for, for years now. Even, even during the UPA, this was being spoken about. But you think that the creation of jobs has really, you know, come down in the last few years? And are you, how much of it is, is because, of the, because of the government? You know, I mean, it's quite clear that on the employment front, things have not improved. If anything, they have worsened. Yes. According to the various data sources that we have access to, clearly. Uh, so in that case, you know, I mean, this whole promise of uh, employment generation, which was possibly one of the most talked about pre-poll promises, uh, it's been a complete cropper, right? Also, you know, on a different uh, note, yeah, both Shubhajit and Mr. Dua, you know, they talked about this inflation and they wanted to give credit to this government for bringing down the inflation. Mm. But all of us know that, uh, you know, it's, uh, it has nothing to do with any policies of the government. It was for tutors. It was because of the massive crash in oil prices, oil price. which brought yeah. down inflation. So why are we giving, no, no, you know, not giving credit <laughs> there. this, this government any, in fact, you know, there's, 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 there's nothing, nothing in terms of any policy initiative which we can say created a space for bringing down either inflation or current account deficit. Right? Bo and so, you know, this, this, okay. uh, I mean, you know, sometimes I think, yes. Okay, your point, your, your point is well taken. Yes, uh, yes, I, I won't entirely agree. Fiscal yes. management of this government has been better. The something which was referred to, they, if they accept them, hardly, you know, I mean, what let him, let him finish. Pravin, Pravin, one second. Pravin, let, let, yeah. yes. let him finish. Let him finish, Pravin. Sorry. Let him finish. If they said 3.8% of the GDP, okay. they, they managed to get it. Now it's a 3.5% goal. All expectations that even that would have been achieved. Alongside that, I, you know, it's partly because of inflation and others, their emphasis on the Reserve Bank. And there may have been differences with the Reserve Bank, etc. We don't know, but that's not in public domain entirely. Bringing down the rates of lending, primary yes. lending rates. But you know, all those have helped in containing inflation. Of course, alongside that is the fact of the hydrocarbon commodity prices, etc., having fallen internationally. Okay, okay, Shubhoy. You know, I think Girish, we are you know, getting Girish away from the. Uh, sorry, Girish. The one, second, uh, yes. one second, one second. Yes, I, yes, Praveen. Both of you want. Okay, Praveen, very quickly, and Reno, you know, no, after no, I was Praveen. Saying that, no, no. Yeah, okay. Yeah, very quickly, when it comes Girish, to that borrowing, no, no, really Reno, 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 Reno let, let, let Praveen, let Praveen what finish. Because there has been no transition. Let Praveen of finish. Policy. Yeah. Reno, let no. Praveen finish. Yeah. Okay. No, no, I was only saying that when it comes to small, medium, micro borrowers, what has happened to lending rates? Nothing. 
It's 0.75% right? less I mean, than last year. Their rates actually have been under, you know, yeah, essentially totally. a very difficult situation. Yeah, so essentially, you know, uh, the causes for inflation, I mean, if, if, if you're getting okay. back to that, essentially what I'm trying to say, 70% of inflation is on account of foods and fuel. Okay. Right? Yes. And this whole business of inflation targeting is fundamentally barking up the wrong tree. Okay. Okay. In uh, Reno, Reno, I very mean, quickly, you know, please. RBI cannot... You, uh, yeah. Renu, very quickly, please. Yeah, I think uh, let's uh, the, ju the yeah the jury is still out on whether the decline in inflation is due to good luck that is crash in oil and global food prices also we must not ignore that or because of good policies we will know I think right. another year or two which time will tell us so let's leave that aside yeah. now the fundamental point is that there is no percolation the Reserve Bank may have reduced uh, interest rates very rapidly its policy rate in the last one one and a half years but it hasn't percolated down to the borrower level, whether large, small, medium, or any size of the uh, sector. Each, each quarter, uh, when we get the firm's results, we find that interest costs are increasing. And if the interest burden of the firms is not come down, then what is the point? I mean, there is no, there is no transmission. And as we all know, the transmission is blocked because the banks are in trouble. Okay. They're in trouble. Okay. Okay. Shubha has a record that 50, about 50 to 55 percent transmission income. has taken place of that 1.75 reduction in the rates okay. which it has made over 14 or 15 months. Okay, we'll get to know that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, some, you know, I, I, as yeah. far as, as, far yes. as yes. employment is concerned, we're talking. You know, some of the, some of the uh, that's, that's gov correct. government's that's programs like Skill India and you know, Make in India and all these things which are aimed at creating jobs because they know fully well, the government knows fully well, all of us know fully well, there's no, there are no jobs in the government. So this, you, you think these are attempts which can work in, 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 the, in the short term or in the medium term also? No, these are long term things, as I said, because you need to develop, I mean, if an entrepreneur, supposing, gets a loan today, it's absolutely ridiculous to expect that by tomorrow, he would be, have the ecosystem ready to be able to offer jobs even to 20 people. So that's why I say that the way I look at the long term plans in terms of smart cities, in terms of digital India, in terms of stand up India, I think they are good ones. They are ones which can be worked on. The problem that I, th I think right now what's, what we are getting into, Girish, is that, you know, the cause and effect is getting mixed up. Inflation came down. Now, whether it's... How, why it came down, how it came down? It came down as a bonus. But yes. at the same time, it also affected the co corporate uh, sector badly because all the commodity companies have had their balance sheets wiped off pretty badly. Their market cap has gone down. We have recently seen an ET report, for instance, which says 15 of the top uh, corporate houses have the market cap reduced substantially in the last two years. So, there is... It's, anyway, it's, yeah. anyway, very quickly, the last rural distress, you think that is, that is one area where this government has been able to, uh, you know, you think it, is, it has been able to uh, do, its, do its work properly? Because that is one area where a I, lot of complaints... Yeah, I think, Girish, in the first year of its NDAs, I think they ignored it. It is the second year which is probably comp political compulsions as well. The lessons learned from the Bihar election. Yes. Which, and the fact that in India, we are always in an electoral election mode. Election mode. Four or five elections per year, and very close to the 2019 elections, that they have started looking at rural areas. Ru that includes rural allocations, rural distress, agriculture policies, in a more holistic manner. Okay. I and so. that is where I think the government's real test will arrive okay. because it's not the most popular way of going about it, yet it is urgently required. Okay, I think on that on that note we need to end. As as many as some of my panelists pointed out, it's a work in progress. Governments, you know, has to have to make have to make some kind of mid course correction and it's it is, as Mustua is pointing out, it's making some of those corrections. We'll wait, we'll have to wait and watch. Next year, we'll have a look at how much of those mid-course corrections have worked. Thanks to all my guests. Please keep watching. We'll come back with Andrew Shun, the big picture, same time tomorrow.